Hello, welcome to the second in the series of Untold Stories, uh, something that we're offering from Carlisle Cathedral for those who are interested in joining us during Lent 2023. My name is the Reverend Hannon Ruth Crossley and I'm going to share something of an untold story uh, that has helped me on my journey of faith. I'm going to share something on St Magnus Way on the concept of our lives being a pilgrimage. Lent means different things to different people. Traditionally, we might say that during Lent, we walk with Jesus in the desert and then interpret that in many ways. It certainly is a time to press the pause button and maybe to stop and look at our life our faith and the world in a different way. Hopefully, for these next few moments together, we might just do that. I was inspired to tell my untold story by this picture, where it's from and what it says to me and what it drew me to discover when I first um, came across it. The picture is called In Search of Solace. It's actually a picture of a large wall-sized tapestry designed and woven on Orkney uh, by Layla Thompson, who sadly died last year. This picture reminds me of my journey and travels on Shetland and Orkney. And when I first saw it, it immediately made me remember the Tombolo, which joins St Ninian's Isle to the mainland of Shetland. Of course, St Ninian is a famous early Celtic saint, and there's a very early chapel on St Ninian's Isle. But it's not St Ninian's story that I'm called to share, but one of the patron saints of Orkney, St Magnus. As we journey through Lent, I'm reminded that often our journeys in life are like moments and times of pilgrimage. We travel and discover somewhere new or something new about a place or about ourselves. Certainly on Orkney, there's plenty of space to be alone and to think. As we travelled on these aisles, we discovered that a new pilgrimage way was being de developed, the St Magnus Way. We couldn't follow this way because, A, it would have taken us far too long at our slow pace uh, during the time that we had, but also because it was only just um, being planned. But we did find out about its development in the St Magnus Centre in Kirkwall. The St Magnus Way follows the path that his followers travelled as they carried his body from the Isle of Egglesay, which is right at the top in the centre of this map, to his final resting place, which according to tradition is in the Cathedral Church of the Orkneys in Kirkwall, a church dedicated to St Magnus. St Magnus' story is tied up very much with the story of Christianity and conquer of both Shetland and the Orkneys. Magnus was a, a Norseman and was given to share in the rule of Orkney along with his cousin. We often hear, don't we, of Viking raids and violence and Viking men often being depicted as warring and violent. Magnus, however, even though dubbed as a pirate, was said to be mild-mannered and fair. His cousin was not quite of the quite the same temperament and they fell out. Magnus was killed at the hand of his cousin on Eggleton and left buried there. His mother arranged for his body to be taken back to the largest island and laid to rest with a Christian burial. 
This triptych tapestry, again by Layla Thompson, depicts part of that story. And I'm going to read a short poem now that she wrote to accompany this uh, triptych called St Magnus, Earl of Orkney, April 1117 AD. Two ships set sail for Egglesay from out the calm and glassy sea. The great wave came, a warning. Blood flowed upon the island green, a murderer, a bloody sea, red sandstone, saviour of our isles. Magnus, save our soul. A heavenly glow or hallowed ground, miracles now abound, sacred bones by possession born. From Bursley Shore to Kirkwall City, St Magnus, take pity. April 1997. A comet bright in our heavens, a sign of hope, portent of doom. Save us now, save us. As part of the St Magnus Way, there are five times to pause and to reflect. For the next part of the, the unfolding of this journey that we are on, I would like to share just three of these with you. So let us continue our pilgrimage in search of souls. Pilgrimage, a place or a journey, a destination or an exploration, an exodus or a coming home with others or alone. In search of or discovering, a task or pleasure to be done or to be. However and whenever, here and now, around and within, past, present and future. My pilgrimage is here and now, this moment and forever. Thanks be to God. And so we pray. My dearest Lord, be a bright flame before me. Be a guiding star above me. Be a smooth path beneath me. Be a kindly shepherd behind me. Today and forevermore. Amen. So our journey starts at the place where St Magnus was killed on Egglesay, and the theme is loss. This tapestry by Layla is called Low Air, and a short poem written by him. No reason, no light, no energy left to fight, not even sparkles on the sea can lift the spirit death in me. One twist in the mind has shut them out and made me blind. A shaft of light enters in to touch the stone cold heart. Waters churn, tides turn, birds take flight into the light. Life blood flows in. Loss is hard. We might think of the loss of a person, of a relationship, of friendship of job. All our losses can bring feelings of grief and sadness and that sadness and grief can come in waves and knock us off our feet, turning everything upside down. It's as if the waves are tossing us about in rel relentlessly in its surf. There's no escaping it. Relief comes only between the waves. It might feel like we're walking on an uneven path where our footing is not always secure. And when we go round the next corner, the view changes and we're uncertain and disorientated again. And then the path might change again and the way become clearer this time. Maybe slowly the clouds disperse and we travel with a little more confidence. In our lives, we can try to ignore the grief or the loss, or we could wallow in it. 
But eventually, perhaps, we can acknowledge it and start to live with it, integrating the loss into our lives. And so we carry on. And this time walking maybe with a limp, but we see and picture the light that returns and the birds that take flight and the tide has turned. If you want to stop for a moment, just to reflect, then please press the pause button. And then when you're ready, press play to start again. You might want to reflect on what insights that you have, if any, about how you respond to loss and to grief. The next part of our journey together is the theme of change. Magnus's remains were left on Percy for 20 years until they were taken eventually to Kirkwall, to a final resting place. If we were walking together physically on this journey today across Orkney, we'd be very conscious of the varied landscape. And we might even wonder how much, if any way, it had changed since Magnus travelled on those islands. As human beings, I have more often than not found that we don't really like change very much. We often prefer to stick to things that we know. This tapestry is called progression. And Layla writes these words. Transitions through difficult passages, inwardly searching balance and order, lost among the waves in a sea of pounding progress, smothering the smouldering soul, awaiting breath to fan the flame, an inert state of confusion, a colour, a line, ignite the fire, not one answer but many on our journey from birth to the grave. Recently, my life has undergone much change as I retired from full-time ministry in the church and then moved house. I've needed to find a new routine. I've got involved in new things with new people, new neighbours, new community. So much change, so much new. In this change, I have tried to keep one thing constant, and that is saying morning prayer. Same morning prayer has always been important to me and it helps me face the day, whatever changes and challenges the new day might bring. In all our lives, we need some baseline of predictability, some patterns that repeat in our days and weeks, that regular coffee date with a friend or relation. Maybe you're the sort of person that likes to do washing on a Monday or shopping on a Thursday or playing bowls on a Wednesday afternoon. And yet we also need change to bring life to some of these patterns. Maybe in my morning prayer, I might change. I might arrange to go and say morning prayer um, with somebody else. Or I might even use a different liturgy occasionally. Taking time out, like on a pilgrimage, can give us time and the opportunity to reflect on the changes in our lives and to think about how they have affected us. Of course, not all change uh, is difficult or think something that we will worry about. If you would like to stop for a moment and uh, reflect on this, then please press the pause button. And when you're ready, press play, play, play to start again. And you might want to reflect on whether there are any changes that you would like to see and what might help bring them about. As we come towards the end of our time together, the final reflection on St Magnus Way is about hospitality. This picture uh, was done by some school children and it's a picture of an event in the life of Thora, who was Magnus's mother. Thora persuaded her nephew 
who'd killed Magnus, to let her bring her son's body for a Christian burial on the mainland of Orkney at Bursley. And to help her do this, she had a secret weapon. Her secret weapon was hospitality. And this picture by the children tells that story. As history has shown us, this secret weapon worked and Magnus's body was brought first to Birdsey and then 20 years later to Kirkwall. We found on our journey through Shetland and Orkney a zest for welcome and hospitality from all those that we met. The place we stayed on Orkney was a wonderful farmhouse which just overflowed with warmth, that warmth of hospitality that was genuine. The cows farm there with milk to provide milk to make Orkney cheddar, which has become a favourite of ours and helps us remember our journey and all we experienced as we continue to enjoy it today. To offer hospitality can be risky though. I wonder if you've ever invited someone for a meal a little afraid that first of all they might refuse or if they astonishingly agree to come they and accept the invitation then the food that you make might not turn out quite as good as you hoped or maybe the conversation might be a bit stilted. There's a lot to worry about and there's a lot at risk. We open up ourselves in, in an intimate way when we invite people to come and share with us. But hospitality is at the heart of our Christian faith. Jesus is often seen at table or sharing food in some way with others. And those of us who worship regularly, either in a church building or with others in their home, often share in this invitation of Jesus to gather, to gather round a table, to take bread and wine, to nourish our body and our souls. I wonder if you'd like to stop for a moment at this point, just to think about hospitality and a particular meal that you shared with someone that was special, or whether someone has been hospitable to you recently and what you could learn from their hospitality. If you'd like to reflect on these two questions now, please press the pause button. And then when you are ready, press play to start again. So as we've been in search of solace, as we've thought about loss and change and hospitality, we need to remember that every day, in every moment of every day, God has already begun and made that step ahead of us. And that can give us hope. This reflection is called In Every Beginning. In every beginning, there is always before, to every previous action, a prior thought, to each milestone an intention, the journey begins and begins and is always beginning. This place receives us from every place and background. Many steps have led to this point. Places and people we have been lead us to now. Lead us to the next stride. May our footprints leave a greater impression on our hearts than on the earth. May our walking leaders on deeper journeys, the discovery of new vistas and fresh encounters, let all our journeys in life mould us and shape us, inform and reform us, speak to us in stillness and in motion. The revelation that in every beginning, God has already begun. Thank you for joining us on this short pilgrimage in search of solace. We finish as we began with a prayer. 
My dearest Lord, be a bright flame before me. Be a guiding star above me. Be a smooth path beneath me. Be a kindly shepherd behind me. Today and forevermore. Amen.